This is Juliana Ranikar Breeze, and I'm here in Orchiva at uh, Cortijo Romero with its original founder, N Nigel Shamash. Nigel, tell me something about your, your background and how you created eventually Cortijo Romero. Right, well, I'm uh, the fourth son of Jews from Baghdad. And my parents came to the UK when they were adolescents in the 1920s. And uh, I was born in a tiny little place called Kirkubri in Scotland. So we, we were the only Jews in the area. They didn't know what a Jew was. <laughs> I, you know, they'd say, are you a Protestant Jew or a Catholic Jew? And anyway, we were, we were really very happy there. We suffered no anti-Semitism. We played a lot of golf. And uh, my father was a businessman and I was brought up with the idea that I have to be a businessman, that I'd make a lot of money. I studied economics. I was, you know, I enjoyed university, although I didn't particularly enjoy economics. And So I, you were doing what your father yeah, wanted you to do, exactly, in other words. Exactly. I didn't think that I had any choice because he was quite a patriarch, a decent sort of guy, but a patriarch, much older than me when I was born. Well, obviously, but he was over 50 when I was born. And then I got my first job was in South America in banking. Very wow. Well, Where? Very well paid in Argentina. And I was wrong material for banking. I, I just really didn't fit in. And I smoked a lot of dope and... and uh, <laughs> <laughs> lived a kind of debauched life and came home. How Went long did you stay there? About a year and a half. But then what happened was my father died and suddenly, my mother was a very sweet person but not such a disciplinarian, and I realised, well, I don't necessarily have to continue working because I around that time I got interested in yoga. I went to a yoga class. I was living in London and I went to a, a yoga class and it just blew my head off. It was all people in long dresses and flowing beards and vegans. And, and it was such in the 70s. Very early 70s. And it was an Earl's Court. And it was a Shivananda yoga class. And it was fantastic. I just, I used to fly home. I, I loved it. I just, <laughs> for me, it was life changing. As if I'd really come home. It was, it was amazing. How did you get there in the first place? Did someone take you? Well, I was kind of miserable. I, I remember caught. A venereal disease <laughs> and uh, I remember we used, to, we used to go to this it was the Paddington Clinic we used to call it the cock shop and, uh, <laughs> and I was just so unhappy I didn't want to be unhealthy and and uh, I remember on the way back from the cock shop just <laughs> picking up this yoga magazine I don't know why I picked it up but I did and it said you do this and that and this and it will make you happy and I thought well yeah, I, I'm, I could always, do that, yeah. I'm always doing things. I pass exams. I can do stuff. I, I was very good at golf. You know, I could do things. Why not give it a whirl? And I started doing it on my own. Of course, all my family hoo-hooed and thought it was the funniest thing because I'd always been a bit of a clown, you know, and <sighs> the entertainer. So when I started doing this, they thought it was very funny. And then I went to this class. It was amazing. And I became a you, vegetarian. You were reborn. Yeah, I was. I, I became a vegetarian. I started meditating. And very soon after, I gave up my job and decided to travel. And I um, I ended up... Where did you go? First of all, went to Formentera. It's oh, an yes. an island in the yes. Balearic. And I took LSD, which was quite a life... And you already spoke Spanish, of course. Yeah, I spoke Spanish. And... Uh, that was quite a big event, and I met all sorts of crazy people, yogis and, and Sufis, and uh, uh, I got involved with a group called Subud. Oh, yes, and it was yes. very, I had a life-transforming experience. Came back and decided to go to California. I was first of all interested in a teacher called Gurdjieff, but I decided... Oh, no, Gurdjieff, yes. I decided I'm just going to go to California, and I... Ended up in a community e in Esalen. It's very near Esalen, but I ended up in a community near Santa Barbara. It was called the Brotherhood of the Sun, and it was set up by one of the senior devotees of Yogananda. And I thought it was going to be a sort of very alternative yogi type place, but in fact, 
Norm, who was the founder of this place, was very much a Bible-thumping guy, a very charismatic guy, and it was a sect. Um, they'd been kind of storing guns and waiting for Armageddon, and huh? I, I felt very much the odd one out. And I don't know if you've ever been in a sect, but you, you feel no. you have to behave in a certain way, and I was the odd one out, and eventually the founder, Big Norm, he was a huge big guy, he said, uh, I want you out of here by sundown. Yeah. <laughs> or and I'll I, shoot you. Yeah. And I said, well, I hope we're still friends. He says, depends what you mean by friend. And I thought, oh, God, I'd better, I better get out of here. So I went off. Was that still in the 70s? Yeah, early 70s. So I went off and I, I was, um, I went off and I went to Calif to Northern California, to Esalen, near Esalen. And I met these kind of weird people. And their thing was that every seventh day, they'd take LSD and they, 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 I was hitching, they said, come and stay with us. And then uh, they were saying, you know, it's, uh, the day after tomorrow, we're going to take LSD, you're welcome. And I didn't know what to do, whether to take it or not, because I was, I'd been, I was a fruitarian at the time. I was, my body was very, very pure. I'd been kind of living on water and fruit. And uh, on the seventh day, I took this LSD and it was, a huge awakening. I felt as if I'd woken up for the first time in my life. And, and it was all psychedelic. Yeah, it was. But it, I thought this is this is much more real than my normal state. It's like I'd woken up. Right. And, and I couldn't. I, I'm trying to fathom. Why do people say this is bad? This is truth. Why? Why is it considered bad? I, don't, I couldn't understand that. I had different sensation of time. I still don't know how or why. I couldn't describe it, but everything felt very different. Time seemed to stand still. And I took off all my clothes. I had an orgasm. I looked at it. You know, it was just, everything was wonderful. And I, I went to this house. I had no clothes on. I, was, I knocked on the door. And the, the people I knew, and they and they said, ah, we had someone like you last week. Go, and, go up to the trees and talk to the trees. And I went up, and there was these amazing big trees, huge, big Douglas Pines, I think they're called, and it was just all, all together magic. And, and you and, were hugging trees. All that. I remember afterwards, one of the women that I was, I was staying with, she said, "Would you have exchanged that for a million dollars?" I said, "Of course not. I mean, how could you buy such a thing? It was such seemed such a stupid question." And it was, a, yeah, it was a big wakening up experience. And uh, I don't think my life has been the same ever since because I knew, I've known that I'm on a path. I have to wake up. There's nowhere else to go. I have to wake up. And that informed my life for, well, the rest of my life. Uh, and which path did you... Well, well, let's talk about that in part two. OK. Uh, on, on the new path, the road less travelled, <laughs> you might say. OK. Oh, thank you very much, Nigel. We'll okay. continue in part two.